In the beginning, man's world was no larger than his eye could see, his horizon no further than his legs could carry him. The far side of the earth was a mystery. Slowly, bit by bit, down through the centuries, man ventured out across the seas, groped his way to the distant corners of the earth, marked the lonely latitudes, explored the jungles, discovered the poles. By the beginning of our century, most of the world was on the map. But for the ordinary man who wished to know the far places, to see Baghdad, Bangkok, Istanbul, Rio, to walk the streets of London and Athens. For him, time was the enemy. So vast an earth, so little time, until now, until the birth of this new age, the age of the jet. Here in the sky, we make our peace with time. The sky is our element now. Up here is where man conquers the clock and the calendar. It took the pilgrim ship Mayflower 65 days to batter its way across the Atlantic. Pan American's Jet Clipper makes it in six and a half hours. It took the conquistador Francisco Pizarro four heartbreaking months to get from Panama to Peru. Jet passenger time from New York to South America is four hours and 15 minutes. It took Sir Francis Drake three years to circle the globe. Pan American's Jet Clipper can fly around the world in less than three days. As far back as you can remember, there are those rare moments of discovery. Moments when you suddenly realize that the simplest things are remarkable. When you can gaze at a flower and discover a continent. And after that, nothing is ever quite the same again. For as long as you live, within you there will always be a touch of Balboa, seeking new worlds. There is a curiosity in us all, a restless hunger to learn. And out of it has come mankind's most profound triumphs. In the child who watches and waits, and wonders how and wonders why, you can see Copernicus struggling to unlock the secrets of the universe, and see Sir Isaac Newton groping towards the truth of gravity. Now, in our lifetime, comes one of those rare moments when a great door swings open and man enters a new age, the age of the jet. No one person brings a new age. It is ushered in by thousands. Most become obscured by the haze of history. Who was Magellan's cook or Columbus's carpenter? No one can tell you their names, yet each did his part to change the world. Today at this huge airline maintenance hangar, in this, the age of the jet, many are doing their part. Clerks, mechanics, secretaries, engineers, instructors, technicians of every kind. Communications checking in messages from Buenos Aires. A memo from London, an urgent request from Rome. And meanwhile, up in scheduling, every flight is planned, every crew member assigned for weeks ahead. Which plane will be in Tokyo on the 15th? Which pilot will be in Johannesburg on the 22nd? Which navigator will be leaving New York on the 29th and landing in Istanbul on the 30th. 
and all the while a training program in progress. A miniature university here. Refresher courses in design and hydraulics, engine theory, radar and communications. Crack flight engineers, mechanics with a dozen years experience, going back to the classroom to keep in touch with the latest developments of the jet. For every hour in the air, the jet clipper spends 25 man hours on the ground, being checked and tested. Strip down the engines. X-ray those hidden places inside the wings and fuselage. Replace the worn parts. Check and recheck. And check again. Jet Clipper 709 to maintenance foreman. Jet Clipper 709 is ready to be towed to run up spot. Number 3C, number 3 engine chain, flat section on number Please notify yard crew to move aircraft to run up spot. This is the nerve center. Maintenance control. In touch with every ground crew on the line knowing just what has to be done to each plane and knowing exactly when it will be ready to fly. Jackson, get some compliments to Santa Maria. Oh, very nice. Jackson? Meet Harry Larson, key man in maintenance. 39 years old, long a master mechanic. A skilled technician, hands sure as a surgeon's, eyes sharp as a jeweler's. A virtuoso with a wrench and a screwdriver. 18 years on the line playing nursemaid to airplanes. Back in Sweden, his ancestors were tool makers for six generations. Sometimes I come in for work in the morning and find myself thinking of everything going on in just this one building. All it takes to keep those jets flying on schedule. Right here in maintenance control is where I begin my day. Stop by and pick up my assignment. Flight 116. She has to be checked out and ready to take off for Paris in exactly three hours. Look closely. This is the key that unlocks the door to a new age. The Jet Clipper, bringing the far ends of the world within reach of us all. When you come from a family of tool makers, one thing you inherit is to know that a fine machine is beauty. Without a wasted line, nothing meaningless. As perfect as a seashell. already had a complete going over in the hangar. Now comes another. Comes another. Operational check. Tool bench. My father used to say, make it clean, make it simple. They sure did it with this jet engine. The air just drives in through the front, gets squeezed by the compressor, heated by a burner to build pressure, then shoots out through the tailpipe. With the jet clipper. Twice the length of a railroad car, with a wingspan big enough to line up a regiment. Cruising speed, 600 miles an hour. Before the first passenger ever stepped aboard, there were four years of test flights, millions of hours of engine time, month after month. its power, it's the simplest aircraft engine ever devised. Fewer moving parts, less wear and tear, easier to service. She's a mechanic's dream. It takes an intricate team to open the door of a new age. His name is Captain Don Michaels, 
pilot on the jet run to Paris this afternoon. 20 years of flying experience, including a thousand hours in jets. An hour ago, he was playing with his kids in his backyard in Connecticut. Before dawn tomorrow, he'll be checking into a hotel off the Champs-Élysées. It's an hour and a half to departure now, and Captain Michaels has a lot of work to do. Pick up the flight plan and weather folder. No problems today. Up there in the jet stream, it'll be clear skies and a tailwind all the way across the Atlantic. in the briefing room, the crew is waiting. Sign in and make sure they're all here. Co-pilot, navigator, flight engineer, purser and stewardesses. Pass on the word about the route and the weather. Regulations call for a checkup quiz on flight procedures before every takeoff. Just to make sure everybody's on his toes. Flight attendants come from 88 countries. France, Sweden, Germany, California, Connecticut, Minnesota. Elbow Lake, Minnesota to be exact. Her name is Dorothy Robinson. She speaks three languages, hobbies, listening to jazz and putting together an international wardrobe. The ring is Italian. The compact is from Paris. The wristwatch from Hong Kong. 49 minutes till departure. Pan American, paging passenger, Paul Johnson. Paul Johnson, please come to the Pan American passenger information counter. There are explorers who will never have their statues in a public square. Discoverers of new worlds who will never be mentioned in the history books. Adventurers like this family from Kansas City, about to take off on their first jet flight. Forty-five minutes till departure, and they buttoned up the operational check now. Seven months and two weeks a year, he's a salesman on the road in Kansas while his daughter's learning spelling and long division, and his wife is busy with the laundry in the supermarket. But for the next two weeks, they'll be Marco Polo and company journeying to Cathay. Cathay being a blaze of lights on the River Seine called Paris. All the months of planning, dreaming, wondering, what will it be like to fly in a jet? 
Now when the answer is so close, every tick of the clock seems an eternity. On this bright spring day, Kansas City has a rendezvous with Paris. What will it be like to fly in the calm air above the winds? 27 minutes till they know the answer. 600 gallons a minute. Enough to reach Paris with ease, plus a healthy reserve. Check. Deliver the menu for today. Pheasant and roast beef, lobster, caviar, champagne. Check. And then the crew takes over for a final last minute inspection. Seeing her here on the ground, you can't know what she's like. Believe me, you don't really know a jet until you fly in it. Check the galleys, four of them, each with an infrared cooking range. Automatic coffee brewers pouring out 32 cups every two minutes. Check the cabin lights, air conditioning. Notre Dame stands waiting in all its stone glory. Paris waits. And here, bit by bit, the intricate design of departure falls into place. Check. Gyro compass. Check. Oil cooler valve override. Check. A sweet aircraft, this one. With everything the genius of man has been able to devise to make her safe and simple and easy to handle. I remember the first time I stepped aboard a jet and sat down at the controls. I felt like a, like a kid on Christmas morning. Time is racing now. The last cargo is stowed aboard. The two passenger doors go into place in counterpoint. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. This is Pan American 707 Jet Clipper Service, Flight 116 to Paris. Captain Michaels and his crew wish to welcome you aboard. What's it like to fly in a jet? Four minutes and they'll know. What's it like? Liberjet 709 on Flight 116 to Idlewild Ground Control. Ground control to number 116, you are cleared to taxi to the inner perimeter, over. We're ready to taxi to the inner perimeter, over.
So smooth, you can hardly tell when you start down the runway. And suddenly you're airborne. You wonder for a moment what's missing, and then you realize what it is. Above the capricious winds and weather, up into the pure blue of the stratosphere. Outside in the thin air, it's 60 degrees below zero. But here in the cabin, it's like a gentle June morning. Up here, the sky is blue, deep blue, bluer than any sea. There is no sensation of speed. You seem to be floating motionless in the air. And a kind of peace settles over you. So quiet, only the whisper of the wind rushing by. And a majestic silence as distance slips past at 600 miles an hour. And you try to imagine what it will mean to the world, this age of the jet, how it will shape the life of man, our future, our children. So much more to be seen and felt and heard in a lifetime. Men fly out to meet their fellow men, and with intimacy comes understanding. The last generation was a stranger to the people of far places. The next generation becomes a neighbor. Jets inscribe their signature across the sky. The great door swings open, and man steps across the threshold into a bright new age. enters a new age, the age of the jet. No one person brings a new age. It is ushered in by thousands. Most become obscured by the haze of history. Who was Magellan's cook or Columbus's carpenter? No one can tell you their names, yet each did his part to change the world. Today at this huge airline maintenance hangar, in this, the age of the jet, many are doing their part. Clerks, mechanics, secretaries, engineers, instructors, technicians of every kind. Communications checking in messages from Buenos Aires. A memo from London, an urgent request. When you can gaze at a flower and discover a continent, and after that, nothing is ever quite the same again. For as long as you live, within you there will always be a touch of Balboa, seeking new worlds. There is a curiosity in us all, a restless hunger to learn. 
and out of it has come mankind's most profound triumphs. In the child who watches and waits, and wonders how and wonders why, you can see Copernicus struggling to unlock the secrets of the universe, and see Sir Isaac Newton groping towards the truth of gravity. Now, in our lifetime, comes one of those rare moments when a great door swings open. It took the pilgrim ship Mayflower 65 days to batter its way across the Atlantic. An American's jet clipper makes it in six and a half hours. It took the conquistador Francisco Pizarro four heartbreaking months to get from Panama to Peru. Jet passenger time from New York to South America is four hours and 15 minutes. It took Sir Francis Drake three years to circle the globe. An American's jet clipper can fly around the world in less than three days. As far back as you can remember, there are those rare moments of discovery. Moments when you suddenly realize that the simplest things are remarkable. In the beginning, man's world was no larger than his eye could see. His horizon no further than his legs could carry him. The far side of the earth was a mystery. Slowly, bit by bit, down through the centuries, man ventured out across the seas, groped his way to the distant corners of the earth, marked the lonely latitudes, explored the jungles, discovered the poles. By the beginning of our century, most of the world was on the map. But for the ordinary man who wished to know the far places, to see Baghdad, Bangkok, Istanbul, Rio, to walk the streets of London and Athens. For him, time was the enemy. So vast an earth, so little time, until now, until the birth of this new age, the age of the jet. Here in the sky, we make our peace with time. The sky is our element now. Up here is where man conquers the clock and the calendar. 